Hello everybody and welcome back and it is very good to talk to all of you again this fine Monday and today I'm going to show you a replay from Ajax1170 who's playing a gearing on Warrior's Path. Now at the very very beginning of this battle Ajax is heading towards the B cap. However, I don't know, in my personal sort of take on this, with the enemy team composition the way it is, I might have played this a little bit more passively. Uh, you consider the fact that you've got an Essex, which is a carrier that can spot you. You've got, you know, three cruisers, one of them being a Des Moines. Um, you got three enemy destroyers. Going to B-cap could be quite risky when you don't really have all that much backup. Combined with the fact that, of course, Ajax is actually being RDF'd as well, which, you know, for whichever enemy ship is actually, you know, tracking him right now, if they use the intel correctly, might be able to really ruin Ajax's day. Especially considering that right now he is by himself. If he was with a group of other ships, it wouldn't matter as much, but by himself, this is a little bit of a risk. If the enemy CB actually pays attention to him, comes for him, decides to attack him, even though he has defensive fire, he could potentially be in for a rough time. Alright, so B cap is currently being taken, and Ajax is going to step on it. So the minute he does that, uh, he's also giving warning to the enemy destroyer that right now there is something that's on the cap with that particular set destroyer. So if I was that destroyer, I'd want to sort of really, um, really in a way, just keep my uh, eyes open and be alert. You know, something is here, you got to be very, very cautious. CV on Ajax's team immediately sends bombers into the B cap. He is going to obviously try to get something spotted. There we go. It pops up on the map. CV knows what it is. Uh, it is a Shimakaze. There goes the torpedoes. And with these torpedoes gone, Ajax is going to do something a little bit ballsy. He knows that the Shima is hiding in smoke because the planes are there and nothing's being spotted. So Shima has to be in smoke. So he pushes around this corner here and I think he's going to try to engage this Shima in close, close quarters combat. Luckily for him, the ships that are really going to be a danger to him, the other destroyers or the, you know, the Des Moines, for example, is a little bit further away. So he doesn't have to worry about that. So typical gearing thing, you know, when you have your torpedoes, pop your torpedoes off in the general direction of enemy ship movement. Uh, your torpedoes have nice long range and they do have pack, you know, they have quite a punch and they will do damage. Comes up basically point blank range to the Shimakaze, uh, gets the proxy spot off and starts engaging. And the Shima, the Shima just wasn't really paying attention because gets surprised and does manage to get off a few salvos but doesn't actually do any damage at all. So kill number one to Ajax, very, very quick, early stages of the game, uh, and one Shima down. So Ajax now gets to freely take this cap. Torpedoes that he sent off in the direction of that Iowa and that Des Moines, well, these torpedoes are going to make contact. So we're going to see him pick up a couple of torpedo hits here. There we go. There's four hits on that Iowa, which is quite a bit of damage there. Iowa's torpedo defense just not all that great. So you know, take torpedoes like that, it hurts. Torpedoes actually continue to go on, and he actually managed to land four more hits, taking out the enemy Des Moines. Not exactly sure what that Des Moines was doing, maybe just not paying attention, but ouch, taking four torpedoes really does hurt. All right, so Ajax now, uh, spending his time taking this particular cap. Um, he's actually popped his smoke as well, because he doesn't want to get reset by the Akazuki that's over there. And at the same time, he's just firing off his guns, trying to set that fire, since that Iowa obviously had to burn his repair. Alright, so, cap taken, and Ajax is now going to head out of here. Oh, actually backing off first. Um, so, gen generally speaking, talking about the gearing again, as, you know, like, how do you play a gearing, is always remember that with the gearing, you have these great torpedoes, but you also have these great guns, right? So you're really the true hybrid destroyer in the game. So anytime you get an opportunity, you're popping off your torpedoes at enemy ships. And when the opportunity presents itself, you also open up with your guns. And you always have to continuously remember that when you're playing a gearing. Although, speaking of, you know, gearing play styles, one thing that I guess I haven't really talked about recently, which I'll sort of talk about now, I'll talk about it a little bit more later on this week, is that, you know, there is the um, rumor to appear in the next patch, the stealth, the open ocean stealth firing nerf, where once ships open up with their guns, the um, spotting automatically becomes their max gun range. And 
Oh, I'm very conflicted about this change. I mean, I understand why a change like this might have been necessary. It is really a pain in the ass for something completely invisible to be shelling you. But at the same time, for some ships, like the gearing, for example, that kind of do depend on the stealth fire to harass enemy ships, I feel like this is really going to kind of take it away from them. And the ramifications of that is we might be seeing maybe more island camping or just maybe less shooting from destroyers as a whole and just more using their torpedoes all the time, um, which is not exactly a good thing either. Um, you're also possibly talking about potentially situations where um, destroyers go back and they revert back to some of the not so good things. Like, you know, well, since I can't really use my guns on anything, maybe I'll just sneak around the edge and go after carriers or something like that. Just, yeah, I don't know. Like, I... I know it's something that should be done, but at the same time, I'm just not a huge fan of this particular implementation, like the complete removal of open ocean stealth firing. Maybe I would have been more, you know, I guess favorable towards just taking away some of it. So like maybe giving... Uh, something like the gearing, a smaller stealth fire window, more towards the limits of its range. So let's say um, maybe like one kilometer, maybe one and a half kilometer stealth fire only instead of the current, you know, sort of large zone of stealth fire that it gets. Because really, I feel like you should at least have still have like just a little bit of it or something, you know, like just have a bit where um, if you're really, really skilled, you can still exploit that mechanic, but, you know, it's not a comfortable place to be. And any one small mistake by you, and you immediately become spotted again. But full-on removal for some destroyers, I feel like, you know, is not really all that good. By the way, a couple torpedoes on that Missouri and just burning them down as well. The, the ship, I guess, for me, that really, I think, should not have stealth fire at all, however, are things like cruisers, you know. Ships like the Zhao really should not have the ability to sit at range and stealth fire you down. I mean, cruisers have just too much power there with their HE for the, you to really um, think that that's actually a good thing, right? It's you know, Cruiser stealth fire really thinks you go away. Destroyer time for, again, like I said, I, I think I would have preferred a little bit more of a smaller window rather than just full-on removal. I mean, part of the reason why I say this as well is, you know, Japanese destroyers. I mean... We constantly say, hey, if you're a Japanese destroyer player and you want to do better, you know, you got to get a little bit more frisky with your guns as well. Don't just always depend on torpedoes. Well, take away their ability to have a little bit of safe stealth fire. And there's basically no need to ever fire Japanese destroyer guns unless you get into like those close range oh crap moments. And, you know, other than that, you know, you don't want to be doing that because you're going to get spotted. And that actually ruins things uh, more for you. So... See, not just, there's something about it I feel like shouldn't be applied so much with like a sledgehammer. Maybe a little bit more of a scalpel approach to fixing it. But hey, again, you know, Wargaming does what Wargaming wants. Anyhow, so um, Ajax tries to get over to help his battleship. Doesn't get there in time. Battleship dies. Gets off some more torpedoes and is going to score some more hits as well. Again, continue to open fire. Typical gearing playstyle, right, is just torpedoes, and then guns, torpedoes, and then guns, and so on and so forth, right? So, continuing to lay down the fire, continue to pop off torpedoes, and just continue to rack up that damage. Alright, so with one battleship down, Ajax is now going to try to head towards another battleship to maybe get over there and pop smoke for him as well. But... I don't know, the other battleship either didn't reach out because it was engaged in a fight with Montana or something, so I don't think he actually saw, so he started pushing forward. And so Ajax really had no way to, um, you know, run over there, get between him and the Montana. Probably would have put himself into quite a bit of danger considering he's really low HP. So instead, he just decides to opt to stay a little bit further back and just hammer the Montana here with his HE. And at the same time, popping off the occasional torpedo salvo. Once again, it's kind of what you're doing when you're playing a gearing. It's like when you have torpedoes, you pop torpedoes, you're not really at times aiming at a particular ship so much when you're firing gearing torpedoes sometimes what you want to do is take a look at the general like direction of movement and sort of putting torpedoes in that pathway shall we say um you know of course using the information you're getting from the predictor to help you decide where you want to put those torpedoes right but generally that's kind of what you want to do and hope that somebody really just runs into them and in this particular battle for ajax these battleships 
yeah, they ran into quite a few torpedoes. <laughs> Get spotted. Uh, does, you know, close the range a little bit too much. Get spotted. This is a bit of a danger zone for him right now. He really just doesn't have all that much HP. And, you know, if a battleship gets a nice salvo, especially something like the Montana, a good salvo off, one penetration, one overpen, and that's pretty much the end of your day here. So, bit of a risky thing to do. There's Witherer, there's Confederate. Um, he's got this Montana flooding. Gets a torpedo salvo in the path of the other Montana there in the distance. All right, now he stops shooting. This is actually the smart thing to have done. Um, really low on HP, and there goes the smoke. So getting out of sight from those battleships, which is a little bit dicey there. All right, his own team, at the as of the moment, is actually, well, kind of screwed. If you look at the team, there's one carrier, one battleship, and two destroyers, including Ajax. And Ajax really doesn't have that much HP. Enemy team still has... Destroyer, cruiser, they got four battleships and that one carrier. Right now, now this is maybe potentially some sort of miscommunication between the enemy team and their carrier, but right now I would really be, you know, if I was one of those battleships, I'd be calling for air support. I'd be like, look, there's a destroyer here, he's low, come and spot him so we can get rid of him and then just take care of the rest of the enemy team. Unfortunately, the carrier seems way too preoccupied on the enemy team with bombing stuff and not really helping his team out so of course his team is going to end up suffering i mean the gearing's already done 274,000 damage so just think about that for a minute right all right so additional torpedo salvos heading towards this particular montana uh oh he's in trouble here as well i think there's one torpedo hit and there's the flooding all right so that Montana is going to flood for a while. Ajax is still trying to pull distance. Now, in this particular build that he's got, he's got no speed boost. So in terms of being able to pull range quickly on ships like the Montana, a little bit difficult. Montanas are reasonably fast, and it's hard to kind of pull that distance when you're inside that, uh, almost, let's say, inside your stealth fire zone. Still trying to pull more range. Trying to pull more range. All right. Eventually, he does decide to open fire. I think he opens fire just a touch bit too early here. I think he could have waited just a little bit longer before opening up. But I guess he wanted to get rid of this Montana as quickly as possible. Um, the Montana, maybe he was afraid he was going to get a heal off or something like that. Oh, there we go. Takes another hit from that other battleship there. Now really low. 2,400 health remaining. Uh, so that's not nice. Continue to drop shells onto that Montana over there. Oof. Come on. Come on, shells. You got it. There we go. A bit more damage. 2,000 HP on the Montana left. There's a bit more. And trying to get either a fire or just more damage from HE onto the superstructure area. Oh, there we go. And there's the fire. All right. So that Montana is going to go down. Okay. So Ajax turns around. Unleashes both of his torpedo launchers with the torpedoes into the path of the other Montana. Checks the distances to all the other ships, making sure that he won't be spotted, right? Turns around, starts engaging with guns. Again, he's in that stealth fire envelope, but he's more on the outer edge of that stealth fire envelope. And I think this is okay for harassment purposes, just a little bit at the edge. Um, and of course, as you can tell with the, the gearing's arcs, I mean, these shells take a while to get there. And the Montana can dodge and maneuver and do things to minimize the amount of damage you'll take from that. Um, still, I mean... Uh, in this particular kind of situation, I mean, again, the enemy CV really did misplay this, right? Just one airplane coming to scout Ajax, and I think his day might be ruined. However, his shooting of the guns uh, causes the Montana to actually turn into the pathway of the torpedoes, goes full broadside to three torpedoes, and, well, he's pretty much done there. So that's kill number three, 339,000 damage. So right now, I mean, that's already an incredible amount of damage. All Ajax has to do now is get within the range of those two remaining battleships because the other team's cruiser and destroyer have died as well. Just has to get over there, pop off a good torpedo salvo, and if he's able to hit any more numbers of torpedoes, we could be looking at 400 plus thousand damage in a curing, which is an absolutely phenomenal number. One kind of scary thing to sort of note, um, Ajax in this battle has hit 16 torpedoes already. So... If you want to kind of put that into perspective, there are some carrier players at the higher tiers who an entire battle will not hit 16 airdrop torpedoes. So to do that with gearing torpedoes is just a metric ton of damage. So Ajax is closing down the range here, trying to catch up to the Iowa and the Yamato. 
it's going to try its best to uh, you know, get some more damage in there. Carrier is launching off more planes on his team, and there's another strike inbound. Ajax is continuing to pursue the Iowa and the Yamato, although he is holding back on his fire right now. The long shell travel times, a huge arc on the gearing. I mean, by the time the shells get there, the, the two enemy battleships would have run away as they're going away from him. Plus, he doesn't really want to give away exactly where he is. Um, just in case, I mean, who knows? Maybe the battleships call in uh, CV support and, you know, they get him spotted and that might be the end of him. Ajax is continuing to push towards the B-cap. The two enemy battleships are now taking that B-cap. I think part of the advantage might be um, the fact that his own team's destroyer right now, if you take a look on the map, is at like G5 and is actually pursuing the enemy carrier and probably shooting at him too. So there's a good chance right now that the carrier is actually preoccupied with you know, the destroyer that's chasing him down and not really worried about the one destroyer that's basically chasing down the two battleships. So Ajax gets in here, takes a look at the predictor path, throws some torpedoes into the path of that Iowa and that uh, Yamato, especially since the Iowa looks like he's actually stopped right now. So get some torpedoes off. Iowa's got 31k HP, and I think that's who the carrier is going to go after. So there goes the f torpedo bomber strike, and look at those dive bombers. Like, oh my goodness, that is some serious damage. Torpedoes hit, there we go. Essex manages to take the Iowa down. 31,000 HP, like holy crap, that was actually a really, really good strike. Um, all right, so Ajax is kind of pulled within range now. The Yamato isn't running away from him as much now, so Ajax is starting to hound the Yamato with uh, guns. And I think in a way, this is the stealth fire that I'm not a huge fan of, right? That ability to sit at 10 kilometers where the ability to hit your shells is still relatively consistent and basically not get spotted, right? I'm okay, again, like I said, with a more um, small version of a stealth fire window, like something really small, like maybe again, like one kilometer near that edge of your range, where yes, you can do some harassing, but it's not as effective, right? Like here, you'll see that he closes in at a distance and it's very, very hard to th for the Yamato to really get away from his shells. Yeah, he is gonna hit a, a good number of them. And that Yamato, who doesn't really get the air support, is in trouble. Although that one destroyer that was chasing after the enemy carrier, he's gone now. So, I mean, right at this moment, this Yamato really should be screaming at his carrier, and I think he is probably for help, because if that Yamato gets any kind of spotting in on Ajax, and, you know, he's at 11 kilometers, if he just turns around and closes the distance in, and lets the secondaries do work, I mean, there's a good chance a 2,000 HP gearing isn't really going to live. Hell, just the single random pen from that Yamato, from one of its shells, that's the end of, you know, that's the end of you. So, unfortunately, Yamato can't see. So, <laughs> the best the Yamato can do is try to get back onto the cap, try to just do anything possible to keep himself alive. Um, you know, he's shooting. I mean, he's even trying to, like, a blind shot. Maybe he's going to hit something, but not easy to do against uh, a small destroyer at, uh, at range, especially because the destroyer is actually not sitting. Smokes are not sitting. Still is actually moving around. So Yamato is just eating tons and tons and tons of fire damage, and all the while, the damage numbers just keep going. Looking at 387,000 right now and ticking with that fire. And is that torpedo going to hit? Managed to get that torpedo salvo earlier into the path of the Yamato, and torpedo hits. There's the flood, and we are just shy of 400,000 damage, and just waiting for it to take over. Oh, nope, still waiting for it. Still waiting for it. 399,000. Come on. Yeah, there we go. 400,000 damage in a gearing. Holy crap. <laughs> that's that's an incredible amount of damage in a gearing. And um, for those of you out there who are really like, oh, you know, how do I play gearing you know, effectively? Like, what's the style of play? This is kind of it. You know, you... You cap when you can, you assist your team when you can with smoke, you know, you harass and hound and hound some more and harass some more. And since, you know, again, that combination of torpedoes and guns is just really deadly. Continue to do damage to this Yamato. Time is starting to run down here. And you'll see something really funny at the very end of this battle, which is, I think it's a bit of a bug though. So HP is going down. Okay. Take a look at the HP. Take a look at the time right now. Three seconds. 
2,000 HP remaining, 423,000 damage. Like, God, it's insane. All right, almost there. One second left. Yamato has nothing for HP now, 251 HP. Okay, time runs to zero. And the last shell that you see falling there, that actually ends up being a kill. That actually does become a kill. He actually manages to kill him after the clock basically hits zero, essentially, or maybe like with a few milliseconds left. No Kraken, though. <laughs> High caliber, Witherer, Confederate, all that. You know, 890,000 credits. Like, holy moly, 9,642 experience earned. 485 shell hits, 16 fires, 12 floodings, 17 torpedo hits. I mean, good lord with that torpedo hits, right? Um, 426,000 damage. Just an absolute incredible amount of damage. I mean, just absolutely like wowed by that i mean you know those, that's not the kind of damage number you normally think a destroyer is going to get his hands on in terms of base experience 4285 base experience ajax <laughs> good freaking game <laughs> take a look at the damage here he shells alone from the shells 101k damage there torpedoes 194,000 damage 100k in fires 27k damage in flooding insanity <laughs> utter utter insanity and then finally in terms of net credits earned after everything cost wise 591,000 credits on a non-premium tech tree ship absolutely incredible battle thank you so much for submitting it ajax hope you folks enjoyed that amazing hearing battle uh, aside from all that folks take care have a good one and i'll talk to all of you again soon